Hey, what's going on, webheads? It's Michael Eaton with Two Dudes Review, here to give you my retro review on Sam Raimi's 2002 mega, mega hit, Spider-Man. Now, to give you a little backstory on this, I actually saw this film on my eighth birthday with a few choice, for a few uh, very good friends of mine, and you know, I remember coming out of that movie theater just being in awe, just because you know, Spider-Man is, in fact, my favorite superhero of all time, right next to uh, Batman. So going back to, to watch this for the retro segment, because I haven't seen this film in a few years, I was wondering, does it still hold up as I remember it as a kid? I'm glad to say, in some respects it does, and in other respects, no. <laughs> Not by a long shot. So, anyway, to go into the story of this movie... It's, I mean, you guys probably know this. It's the story of Peter Parker, who is a nerdy high school student in uh, Queens, New York, who gets bit by a radioactive spider and starts developing powers such as web shooting, wall crawling, and, and radioactive blood, and superhuman strength, and all that stuff. And he decides to use this to basically become a superhero called Spider-Man. Because, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. So, I mean, I won't go too much into the plot because you guys have probably seen this. Basically, he goes up against Norman Osborn, who is the, a.k.a. the Green Goblin, played just with such cheese and delight by Willem Dafoe. I mean, every time Willem Dafoe is on screen in this movie, he just looks like he is having the time of his life. He is just so entertaining to watch, just so fun. A great example of a good comic book villain, just the itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout and just, no one says no to me. Like, he has that amazing, amazing voice. Just so memorable, so well done, and probably of the original three that Sam Raimi had done, he's easily the best villain, right? I mean, I, I would say Doc, him and Doc Ock are tied for the top spot. So I'm not going to go into the whole plot of this because it's, it's obvious. You guys have seen this. If you're a comic book fan or a Marvel fan or even the tiniest bit of a Spider-Man fan, you have seen this movie. Just I, I, A lot of the effects do not hold up today because you know they didn't know how to use computer-generated effects very well back then. So a lot of the effects do not hold up that well, particularly in the scene in Times Square when the Goblin first shows up. Because a lot of the effects just look rubbery and phony and cartoony. But, I mean, I know that's part of the charm of it. But, I mean, compare it to special effects today. I mean, we, we back then we had a long, long way to go. <laughs> I mean, you could argue that we still have a long way to go in some respects. But, yeah, just overall, I would say... Oh, a few things I, will, I do want to bring up. I, I do enjoy the supporting cast, like, you know, Kristen Dunst and James Franco as Mary Jane and Harry. And I, 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 do, I do enjoy them. I mean, in Spider-Man 3, not so much. I mean, I'll get to that at some point down the road because, oh, is that a shit show? And also, uh, one more thing I do want to bring up. I do want to bring up the awesome music. Not as particularly the song hero by the guy who sings for Nickelback. I actually grew up like really, really enjoying that song, like replaying that at the end credits like over and over again. I mean, I'm sure a lot, I'm, I can't be alone on this because it's just, it's just a really good song. You're like, like, a hero can save us. I'm not gonna stand here and wait. You know, I, I, I like that song. It's a good song. And just so, just overall, I would say, overall, the acting is pretty hokey for its time. The effects don't really hold up, hold up all that well. But the fight scenes are really entertaining, and Willem Dafoe is a national treasure. And Toby, Toby McGuire, I like him more than Garfield. I will say that. I like him more than I like Garfield as Spider-Man. So... Overall, guys, if you have not seen this one yet, where the hell have you been living for the past 20 years? Like, if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. It's hokey as hell. It's a example, 
pure example of a comic book movie. It's you don't have to you don't take it seriously. You just have an amazing time. So I don't I I'll get to the other Spider-Man films at some point down the road, but until then, webheads, I'm Michael Eaton of Two Dudes Review. Have a good one.